suffer, but it goes to the final day. You've come to Old Trafford in the running and you've won. Is that something that just cannot be underestimated? Absolutely not. Um, we know the difficulty of it and that's why we have only won twice in 20 years here. And, um, and yeah, I think we started the game really well. Uh, scored the goal and the goal affected us, I think, in a negative way, especially with the things that we had to do on the ball. Did you get into sort of protection mode a little bit? I think so, and play to save and play backwards and play in areas that um, that it, it wasn't progressing our play and, and creating the threat that we wanted and we started to give a lot of balls away because of that and then the game becomes open. But it's true that in the same hand we defended so well. Again, I don't think we conceded much at all and um, that's what uh, we got us the results. Yes, 11 away clean sheets in the Premier League. I mean, those two centre-halves, I know it's a team thing, but Saliba and Gabriel together, that is a, a partnership, that I suppose, that gives you a chance in any game, even if you're not at your best. Yes, but I think it's the attitude of the whole team. Uh, you know, look at Kai, the way he's chasing people, the way he puts pressure on the ball all the time, the discipline in a lot of habits that defending are super important. I think that bit as well was very, very good today again. So it's a collective thing. I'm thinking back to some Arsene Wenger running advice, which you told your press conference about. Uh, it was a week or two ago. And he, basically it was, it doesn't matter how you win, just win in the running. Uh, did you take that advice today? Yes, but uh, of course we are really happy to win. You want to play better, especially with the things that we did in the ball in the second half, because there was so much space as well to to help them. But um, that's another step that the team has to take when it comes to these stages to be even more dominant. But um, the difficulty today was a high stake. We did the same with the Spurs, so big credit to the boys. How, how different is it, and how much more difficult maybe is it when the stakes are so high, when you're this close to the end? Yeah, it is. The, you, don't have, you know, you don't have. Margins for error, uh, you play big teams uh, with necessity, teams that um, they really want to put things difficult against you, and you have the necessity to win, and um, that has to be managed emotionally. It goes to the final day, definitely. You might be first, you might be second going into that final day, but just that achievement that you've stayed the course, what does that mean to you? Uh, today we wanted to open that door to say, last game in front of our people, our families will be there, and let's live one of the most beautiful days that we have lived together and see what happens. Yeah, and I remember you saying the other week, I think it might have been for Brighton City, that you're just going to sit and watch their game in your pyjamas. Have you got any Spurs pyjamas? <laughs> we will certainly be watching the games. I watch all, all the games. It's true. We need that result uh, in order to achieve it, and on top of that, we have to do our job. So. Everything is at stake still. Could they still be fallible? I mean, it doesn't look like it, does it? But could they? You know them better than anyone. Uh, it's football. There's always possibilities. Thanks, Mikel. Thank, Thank you. Certainly is. Uh, as I said to you earlier, 27 Premier League wins, more than any other Arsenal team in the Premier League era, more than the Invincibles, and it still might not be enough yeah. uh, to win the league. But do you think Tuesday, ironically, Tottenham is the most likely when you look at West Ham? at the Etihad for, for Manchester City. Is it all on Tuesday now? Um, I, I, I just look at a, a Man City side that are just... They have not lost this year. Was it 33 wins? You know, I still can't understand how Rodri's not in the player of the year, but the fact is, is that we're trying to ask a team like Tottenham who have been so up and down, so open to stop a Manchester City. You know, I, I can't get carried away with hoping that something happens. They haven't, they haven't got a single Premier League point or goal in the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium? Well this, is the two, well, this is when we find out. You know, you can hang your hope on that, obviously, but, like, this is where we find out, because City are, are in a frame of mind where they know this is it. They can't lose this game if, if it comes out. City knows that they can't do anything other than try and get a draw out of this game. Win. They can't even get a draw out of this no. game. They've got to win the game. They've got to win the game. But they've so, never played Tottenham in the title race. They've never played at this time. At the Tottenham Stadium, no. And I think that plays into That's, this is be, this be. is where they are the best. They they, they yeah. build up, like Sir Alex used to say, it starts at Easter. They've built up to that. They're there thereabouts, and then they're just relentless. They've, they've done it for years, you know. When it, the, the Liverpool race last was the last season, you know, mm. was it ninety four points. Season before, season yeah. before. Oh, it was the season, 90, I mean, yeah, ninety three. Ninety three. Yeah, fourteen mm. consecutive wins. It's just what they do. So tough. I don't think. Yeah, Tottenham but the thing is, can win that game. Yeah, I, I, you have to, if, if Tottenham win that game, then it will be something that nobody will be expecting. And of course, we're all hoping that can happen because, you know, I think Arsenal have done brilliantly to get to this stage of the season. Coming off of last season, they've learned a lot from it. And you can see what the, how well the players are playing. But again, we're chasing down a team that's going to probably, if they do do it, 
they will be the best team. They, you have to say they're the best team in the Premier League era because they've done it four times. Mm. Not even the great Man United sides, they've done it three. But this is a team what they're trying to chase and it's tough, the bar is high. But they've done magnificent and they've just got to keep going. And as I said, there's so many subplots here. We're going to watch Villa-Liverpool tomorrow here. If Villa lose that, then that makes that game more difficult for City because then Spurs think, wow, we can win that, win against Sheffield United and finish fourth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the beauty of this season, isn't it? We always wanted it as a neutral to go down to, to the wire. Um, relegation is looking like it's sorted, but European football is not. And, of course, the, the, the big one, the title, is not either. So we're still hoping it goes down to the last day. Yeah. Um, and whoever wins will be absolute deserving of the title because two teams are absolutely incredible, not much between them at all. Um, but Manchester City, I agree with the lads, I've said it all season, they've just got gears, and as soon as they start needing to win in the last month, the last two months of the season, we've seen it before, we've seen it before. It's, uh, they're a hard team to So start. you just think two wins for City? I'm starting to believe that, that both teams will just win all their games now. They're, they're just, they're in the zone. So they're in the title-winning zone, and I don't think there's going to be a slip-up. But all Arsenal can do, again, they've got one game to to go, whatever happens on Tuesday, it's just win the game and just yeah. see what happens. Yeah, well, that's what they had to go. Like, today was a, you know, could have been a really tricky one for them, and I think that there was a little bit of nervousness. You heard Mikel Arteta say that we didn't progress the ball and do what he wanted to do, because that's just nerves. But, like, you have to feel that um, at home against Everton, knowing um, the last game of the season, which seen, depending on what City do, they're just going to do what they've been doing and winning games and getting it done, because that's what they've got to do now, because that's what City will do. They'll just get it done, they'll try and get it done. Yeah. Well, it's all on Tuesday. Mm. And there's nothing worse, absolutely nothing worse, with not getting it done, and then we did done it, <laughs> you would have won it. Yeah. And I've experienced that once. So was Michael. Don't remind him. Mm. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's the worst feeling ever. <laughs> we did we did be West Ham. Yes, I remember oh my the 2-2, God. the 2-2. Yeah. It was 0-0, wasn't it? Was that a 0-0? 2-2. 2-2, it was 2-2, yeah. Mike. And we won't even mention... Old. We won't, even mention, we won't even mention it is, but no chance of a Mikel Arteta Spurs team talk at this stage to G them up. Let's remind you of the situation we find ourselves in going into this final week with Manchester City having played one game fewer than Arsenal. It, of course, if, if the points were the same, the first thing we then look at is goal difference and Arsenal still edge it by three. Uh, but Manchester City edge goals scored. If it was then the same, it would go to the head-to-head, -head, and Arsenal have a better head-to-head -head against Manchester City this season. But if City were to draw against Spurs on Tuesday night, it gets really interesting around the goal difference, doesn't it? <laughs> Going into that final day. And then yeah. it becomes, we count the scores as they go in. Uh, yeah, it, well, that's what everybody will be hoping, yeah. I mean, it does... Uh, yeah, I said after the Aston Villa game when Arsenal got beat at home at the Emirates, I said it was all over then. It hasn't changed my mind. Like Man City just do what they do. I mean, it's, it's disheartening at the moment. I mean, and they're, they're doing it under pressure. You've got to realise it's under pressure week in, week out. You know, go to Palace, need to win a game. They go 1-0 down in two minutes, just pop it around, win four. You know, Palace have been beating everybody since then. You know, they just just keep on doing and doing. We do, I just don't think we give them enough respect, Man City. They just, they're just a phenomenal football team. And, you know, Arsenal are probably going to finish second. And If you're, if you're relying on Tottenham to win a football match or draw don't, a football match, yeah, you, no. Don't go upsetting them at this point. Oh, I, I thought yeah, you were trying to play no. the mind games, trying to lull City yeah, into I'm a sure there we are. sense of security. I'm sure every Tottenham fan going, Paul Merzer says, get behind, yeah. Yeah, I have a tattoo. That's if they right. win now, I'll have a Tottenham tattoo. Right, there you go. That's on record. There, there's the any incentive that you need. Yeah, there it is. I will. Where are you putting it? Oh, well, you can't see it. So I <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's remind you who they're, they're both playing on this, um, this final weekend. And, of course, we have to stress that City have the, the job to do before then. But um, Arsenal play at home to, to Everton and Manchester City are at home to West Ham. And, and only the bottom three, the relegated three, have conceded more goals than, than West Ham United. Would you expect whatever happens both to win on the final day, Wayne? You'd say so, but what I will say, Everton have been in good form as well. And um, I know Sean Dice wouldn't want Everton to, to lose the end the season with a loss. So... Um, we're talking about the City game on Tuesday, which is obviously a, a, a massive game, but um, they've both got to win on the last day of the season, so um, there's still obviously a little bit to go in the season, and um, 
I think City will win it. I think City uh, will win the two games, but um, I, I, I'm not convinced Tottenham will just let them win it. But Manchester City, we have to remember, because we've, we've been there on these big occasions, Roy, when, when Man City played Villa a couple of years ago, and we all remember the scenario at half-time, it was, it was going to Liverpool, the title, and then going a little bit further back, Wayne will remember the, uh, the QPR game and the Aguero moment. Yeah, but ultimately they got the jobs done there, and, uh, and when you look at their squad of players, um, the quality they've got, and Pep, and I just think it's, all, it's very difficult. I, kinda, I questioned them maybe four or five weeks ago, I wasn't sure, but over the last few weeks, I, I don't know why I even dealt with them. I've done that about three or four years ago. I said never again. They just, again, we go back to it, a, a machine. Even yesterday, you know, not easy game sometimes. Just going four goals. The quality they have, players off the bench, world-class players, obviously the, an amazing manager. Yes, you just can't see them being stopped now. Let's remind you then of the scenario that, that Spurs and Aston Villa are facing because... Paul's talked about the need for, for Spurs to be motivated. That gap is four points. Spurs can still get to 69. Uh, clearly, Villa need to uh, get two points. Their goal difference is eight superior, so you would think 69 is going to be enough for them. Um, so, realistically, if they don't win, Spurs are still in the race. If they don't win against Liverpool tomorrow, I, I, I should say. You know, if, really need to get beat. To, if Villa got beat tomorrow by two or three, all of a sudden, that goal difference changes a bit. Then they go and get beat by one or two well, at we've Palace. Villa struggling in recent. Yeah, and, you, yeah. And, pa and then they go and get. So if they lost their next two games by two clear goals, which is not, you know, I'm not talking out of extraordinary here. That's four goals, and then all of a sudden Tottenham could put anything, you know, get a draw against Man City, and then I'm having a tattoo, and then they go and <laughs> then they go and put six past Sheffield United that you wouldn't put anything past. It, it all goes down to tomorrow, but. I'm starting to want Arsenal <laughs> to win him now. <laughs> He's having second thoughts about well, the tattoo. I, I think really we can have a competition for our subscribers as to come up with a tattoo oh. that you can. Uh, oh, no, you I can have why. I'll be that, that little cockerel on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will have it, I'll tell you, I will have it. <sighs> Stranger things have happened, who knows? Yeah, no. yeah. Do you know what I think we're talking about? Will Tottenham have a go or not? It's, it's Man City, this Man City team. Tottenham might play the best game they've yeah. played in years and get nowhere near them. So, so it, it's the task they've got is so difficult against against City. They have a City. decent record, don't they? They have a decent record. Really good. Yeah. 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 Manchester City have scored at Spurs. I think yeah. they, they beat them in the cup this this week, this season, didn't they? I think they went yeah. there and beat yeah, them in the cup. But in the league, they haven't beat them. They haven't even scored a goal in the league against. But we look at the pressure. Well, we look at City. You know, the pressure's back on City. But what makes them a really brilliant team is they just deal with that pressure. Mm. Just they seem to enjoy it. This idea of the last few years ago, must win games from it. They just. They kind of they seem to enjoy that pressure and turn up and produce their best. They got it through, and they got it through courtesy of Trossard. We've mentioned his 17 goals. Yeah. Uh, he said they only had one effort. He, he's been a bit kind. They had five efforts on target, yeah. but clear sightings of I goals. I think this is what he might have been saying—a clear sight. And I think this is where Arsenal were ruthless. And you heard Kai, Kai Havertz in the in in these um, interviews saying that he had a look across and saw um, saw Casemiro not coming out, and that is the level that we're dealing with. You can't make a mistake of this magnitude um, in a game that means so much to the opposition like Casemiro's doing here. He's not getting out quick enough like we, we you notice there, Pete, he's, he's, he's got to get out there quicker. Kai Havertz has seen it, Ben White's executed very, very well, but I think the Trossard's run, Juan Bissaka, I'm, I'm very surprised he's letting get across him like that, but the run is very good. Maybe that's where Casemiro should have went, but he's got in there with pace and then sorted his feet out because the ball's come across really quickly. Uh, mix it, you know what I mean, Mike? When when you look at him, he's 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 really sorted his feet out quickly. Look, yeah, really, really just to put the pressure on United. Yeah, I I mean I love that type of finish because you as a centre forward you you're having to it's all about timing, isn't it, mm. righty? You, you're having to guess when or educate guess when the ball's going to leave his foot. You've got then got a time it thinking right the ball's going to go there to there. <laughs> if I go early, I'm going to be too, too far too past far, the near yeah. post. Or I'm going to have to slow my run and the defender gets it. So you've got to be absolute lightning fast, as quick as you can, but time it perfectly. So you've got, you know, and, and that's all it is, isn't it? You're it's brilliant. When, Trust how, there. What. Yeah, for, it's, for, it's for, great. For the like, finish is the easy part, Exactly. The finish is, is easy. He's made it easy. But, like, when Michael explains the, the amount of thought that's gone into that, that's got to go from Kai Havertz, his pe pa pass has got to have the right amount of pace to get through past the players, get past the keeper... And then the run, I think the run and the timing of Trossard's run, when you look at Wan-Bissaka, who's a very good one-on-one -on -one defender, 
It's just, it's just brilliant. And it's one of those, again, it's one of those goals that we take for granted. Oh, he's just a, a tapping. But there's a lot of work that's gone in to make that look as easy as it, as it was. Earlier on, but, you but, touched the can I just, oh, go on. Yeah. From, from a defending point of view, mm, I mean, obviously there are a few mistakes in there. So what you have here, you got Casemiro. We talked about this before the game. Casemiro is not a centre half. I think he proved that on Monday night. So when, when we don't see Onana, right? So we, we, we don't see on, Onana should be pushing up behind him and actually say, go further forward, go further forward. He doesn't do that. He actually stays on the line. You know, it, so when we talk about being don't, they don't look like a team. They attack like that as well. They attack like individuals, they do. don't they? Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. today is a great example of it's, it, it's, it's all about just when you get the ball, I'm going to try and score a goal. And I'm not going to look at any teammates. I'm just going to try myself. And this is for me as when we talk about standards and, and you know, what my these are your options. This, this is what you can do, or that is what you can do. Or we pass it out to there. When we're here, this is what we're going to do. And, and I think someone like Ganacho today is a great example of, of how that, that doesn't work. I mean, we see, we see the goal here again. Look at how spread it out United players are. They're not reacting to it, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, listen, it takes two to tango, doesn't it, I suppose, but... Us as centre forwards, us as attacking players, you prey on a weakness. You prey on. You, you try to force errors. If nobody made any errors, every game would be nil nil. So of course we're constantly thinking, right? He's dropped. He's, he's not squeezed, not squeezed up too quickly. Right now, Averts is, and then there's a, a you know a chain reaction of, of problems in behind it. So that's what we're preying on. Of course, Peter will see it in, in, in a certain way as well. But you know there will always be little mistakes, and it's how you punish them, how you capitalise on them, and how you put that pressure on. But would you, would you always then do the same thing? Or would you try to put a variation into what you do? It depends what the mistake well, no, well, is, I mean, in that yeah, situation. Yeah, but you would look at it, wouldn't you? When you get well, the of course ball, you react if you're to running everything. towards... To, if you had the ball, you're running towards defenders. Would you always do the same thing? Not at all. No, but this every, is, and every scenario is this very is what, different. As, as a fan, I'm sat there, I'm watching... I, I mentioned Ganacho before. I'm, I'm, I'm watching Ganacho, who has, today had the ball so many times on the left. And I'm hoping for him, just now and again, to do something different. But every time, he's trying to finish it himself. Garnacho so, gives me, he gives me that, that impression that um, he, he doesn't play off of it. He's, he's, he hasn't got that person in there to, to play off, right? So he can go, we have Emil. You know what I mean? Some of the times if I came off and Dennis would be there, or Kevin Campbell, Alan Smith. He's somebody that, when he gets it, he seems very, very one-dimensional in the way that he's only going for goal. You don't see too many one-twos off of him. You don't see him looking to square it inside for his partner and the partner giving him the same thing. And this is where, for his age, and we know that he's capable of scoring great goals, is where the inexperience comes because he, 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 the decisions he makes in the final third um, at the moment, especially in this game, they, they, they weren't good enough. This, he, need, he needs to be coached a little bit, mm -hmm. you know? That's all to, it is. To, because... So these are your options. When you get into different, different situations, you know, you cannot do the same thing every time. We know, we, everybody knows what he's going to do now. He's going to go left and try. OK, he's trying to cross the ball. It's not a great cross, you know. But he, he kind of, it seems like, you know, he's doing a similar thing every time. Now he's going again, going again, going again, trying to. He's got pace, yes, but he's got players up there. There are options, other options. And, and if you look at how easy it is for, for, for Arsenal's defenders, to, I mean, this is... OK, this is the one time where he actually is yes. doing it right, but then the finish had... Didn't Seven have shots today, none on target. Exactly. You know, and, and again, you know, it, it, it's going towards goal. It's so easy to defend again. He's not challenging. He's not changing his, his angle. And, it just be, and I'm not criticising him as such for it because he's a young man. He's full of energy. He wants to do, you know, what he's, what he's experienced as successful before. But it... it it's, uh, he's up against possibly the best defenders in the, in the league. They will suss him out like that, quickly. And therefore, you need to put some variation into what it is that you're doing. But as well as coaching, Peter, is it? That's is coaching. It, it, yeah, it's coaching, but it's also that if, if, for instance, he'd been in your 1990, mm. imagine all the people on the pitch, on the training pitch, who would pull him to one mm. side, like years later they did with yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo, for instance, when he was going to ground too easily. This squad doesn't have that type of character to help a young player like Garnacho or Mane, no, does it? But, and when you don't have that, 
those characters in the team, then it's down to the coaching staff to help the player maximize his potential. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ganacho is a great, great player and prospect. He is. He yeah. can be one of the best players in the Premier League without a shadow of a doubt and he's already done really really good things but in the last sort of month or two it, it it's kind of it's felt a little bit like he every time he gets a ball he thinks he's got to finish it. Is that because he's been asked too much and we started what 30 odd games in a row which again going back in Manchester United's history a young player would never be asked to do would they? Possibly I mean it depends on his mental state his mental capability but you know you look at Manchester United's threat, it's hardly a threat. You look at the names on paper, we're still not sure about Hoyland. You know, he could be brilliant, he could be, you know, a, a poor sign. We'll, we will see when he gets more. But Ahmed, you know, does a bit. But these are the type of players that probably should be coming off the bench, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, to change something at the end. I mean, none of them at the moment strike me as... Manchester United. That is a Manchester United player. I mean, you think we keep harping back to a few years ago, but they, you know, the Wayne Rooney's, the Berbatovs, like ultra class. Right, he mentioned before Fernandez. Obviously, they miss him. He's one player that can do something different. But for a Manchester United team, yes, there's injuries, but even on paper before the game, you just think, is that it? There's no, there's no goals in that team. Okay, let's get some Manchester United reaction. Uh, here is the defender, Johnny Evans. I, mean, I know you'll not want to stand here and be too upbeat, but in terms of maybe a bit of pride restored after Monday, was that was that a lot better today? I thought we were more solid. Um, didn't I mean we tested the the opposition goal a bit more uh, probably than than the other night, but you know still um, you know, disappointed to lose and you know with big expectation and, and, and uh, on the young players in the squad, you know Ahmad coming in and, and Garnacho. Um, to provide that Hoyland as well up front, but you know, like I say, I thought we were a lot more solid today. What was the key to being more solid? Yeah, we probably we changed the shape a little bit and you know, put two midfielders, um, you know, probably more defensive minded in there to sort of make us a bit more compact. How tough is it? I mean, you've obviously got vast experience, and the manager's spoken a lot about the changes at the back. The was it 14 different centre back partnerships? How tough is that, Johnny? When you, when the guy next to you is different like every single week? Yeah, you know, it can maybe take a game or two. Um, to sort of get used to each other's game, and yeah, you know, I think uh, I think every team to go through that would suffer. Um, so, you know, I think if you look at the, the, the teams, you know, at the top of the league, especially, you know, they've, they've not had many changes. Maybe lost one or two players, but they've been able to cope. I think the amount of injuries we have had, you know, like I say, especially the a lot of our ex experienced players, Martinez, Varane, you know, has had long spells out. Casemiro had a long spell out. Um, you know, even Harry, you know, missing the game today. So a lot of experience, and you know we've been very reliant on the young players over the season. You know, give credit to them. I thought they, they were, I thought they were great today, the two wingers, um, and they've been great all season. Uh, the young lads, Cobby coming in as well. So a lot of uh, responsibility thrust onto them, and I think they've, they've handled it really well. Does it feel like a lot of responsibility for you when there's a lot of young players around, and also even though the guy next to you is vastly experienced? He doesn't play centre back. No, there is. There's uh, <laughs> there's a lot of responsibility, and you try and take that on and. You know, myself coming back in, I guess my second game um, in a couple of days, and I think you know I've, I've missed a little spell out of, out of the team myself. So you know you, you feel it whenever you're out of the team like that, and you feel like you know you want to be able to contribute, co contribute. And I think there's probably a lot of lads in the squad that, that feel the same. Um, Luke Shaw, Victor Lindelof as well. You know it's a lot. You know, you, what the teams had to cope with, and you know I think the managers try to be positive over the season and deal with it and, as best he can. And I think he's I think he's handled that very well. Where are Manchester United at? at the moment, do you think? I mean, you know, as well as anyone, the, the scrutiny and the criticism is always big with this club. Like, to put it bluntly, how bad is it? Or not? Like, Man United, you know, you want to be challenging, you want to be winning games, we expect. You know, we've still got that mindset where we should be winning today, and, um, you know, I know Arsenal at the minute are on a good run and you're up at the top of the league, but, you know, it's disappointing coming away from the game, and I think we should always have that expectation. Uh, um, I have to say, the fans have been... You know, I, you know, since they've come back, I think they've been you know, very supportive of the team and and understanding. They're like, you know, like you mentioned before, the injuries and um, you know where we are as a team at the moment. You know, hopefully, and can regroup in the summer. Uh, we've got new owners have, have come in and you know, hopefully they've got different ideas. There's probably you know a lot of changes made behind the scenes at the top as well. So they'll come in, have their new ideas, and hopefully give the the place a, a refresh. 
Thanks for your time. Thank you. A lot. Cheers. Cheers, Paul. Well, Johnny Evans, Peter, there uses the word refresh. Um, they've lost for the ninth time in all competitions at Old Trafford uh, today, and that is equal to club record in their entire history. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, refresh good. is something of an understatement, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, obviously that isn't great. And it's us 14 defeats in, in the Premier League, which is really, really bad. A new Premier League record as well. Yeah, yeah, that's really, really bad. Now... We know that there are new owners, new leadership at the club. It is something, it, it's a hope. You can cling to that hope that they will come in and make some tough decisions. Make some... Have they got big plans? We saw you when we were, Michael and I were covering <laughs> the game at Chelsea, sitting next to Sir Jim Radcliffe. So we did promise, didn't we, that <laughs> night, when Peter was next with us, we'd ask him, what's, what's the inside track from Sir Jim? The inside what, track. What's, uh, uh, yeah, what's well, first of all, uh, Sir Jim, he's a proper, proper football fan. I mean, he is... He could be on the terraces and singing all those songs and actually saying whatever he feels like in, in whatever moment. And that was, that was quite refreshing to have somebody who loves football like, uh, as much as that um, and, and also loves Manchester United the way that he does. I mean, it, he's coming in at a time where everything is falling apart from decisions made over the last 10 years. That's how I see it. So there is an opportunity now to, um, to draw a line and say, from now on, we do this. It's already, so, oh, I mean, we've seen from the media, it was always, you know, something about an email and he's done this and people are complaining about that. But changes are going to hurt. They are going to hurt. You are, something's got to give. And that is my hope that this, this summer, that something, something big, a big statement is going to be made that, that tells me as a Manchester United fan, that we're now changing direction. We cannot continue in the same way. We cannot keep believing that we can buy players and buy our way out of it because we tried. We have really, really tried. We are the football club in the world with the highest net spend in the last 10 years. We can't, I mean, we can't keep doing that. We've got to be clever. We've got to, we've got to develop players as the club has always done for their most successful periods. We gotta be smart in the in and scout really well, do the diligence on on players, make sure that we get the right type of players in. When we look at the squad today, you know, that you know, we've got one team or the squads, we've got one team challenging for the championship, we've got one team not challenging for it. The the, the one team they've got every position covered on the bench, from the bench. And you will not really see the difference when they make the substitutions, other than a little bit more energy is but the, you, the quality won't f fall. But for Man United, you see all the young players who's never played in the team before, they are then being asked to come in and do that job. That's not what Manchester United is all about. It's not. And, you know, what, what are the changes going to be? I don't know. People crying for a new manager, people crying for certain players to leave. We have to wait and see, but something's got to give, for sure. And it's not going to be a quick fix, whatever happens, is it? No, I would, I would say not. I'd say not, but although, you know, someone like Mikel Arteta came into to Arsenal as opposite number today, and, and you'd say that that's happened reasonably quick. Isn't it? Listen, it's We're not... Arsenal. Happened. As bad a shape as Man United are now, though? No. 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 But, uh, there was a but, lot of players that had to go, though. He had yeah. to do a lot of work behind the scenes. And that's hard. That's harder yeah. sometimes than getting players in, isn't it? Yeah. That's, that, and you'd but, also say the yeah. Manchester United would have the financial clout to, yeah. to accelerate the process better than Arsenal back at that time. But Mikel Arteta's done it and, you know, done it really well. So, you know, it can happen, but it's not going to happen in a year or two, is it? They're That's not going to win the league again. Well, one, one of the big problems is, of course, that players have been signed for very, very high transfer fees, which has to be appreciated over a certain number of years, so they've had to sign long contract, five-year contract, at very, very high wages, you know? And if the players that you've signed are not good enough, are they going to leave? I mean, there are certain players at the end of their careers, are they going to leave and then leave all that money behind? I don't think so. So they're still there, and they're still in, you know, in consideration with FFP, you know, which is something that United really have to be careful about now. So it, it's not as easy as we think to, to make those changes, especially getting players out, players we don't want there. So it, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see what uh, Sir Jim is doing, but hopefully he's going to do something. He's made changes in the background, hasn't he? Yeah. You know, 
the main one he's got to do is, 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 the, is the main job at the club. The, the mo Sir Alex Ferguson always used to say the most important person in the club is the manager and they've got to have that right but once you get the right manager <clears> then I think you can start accelerating that process but the chopping and change the uncertainty the lack of results the lack of a plan the lack of everything that we see the lack of progress full stop I mean you've got to get the right mm. manager. after you know, the game on Monday night mm. you were very very clear about what you thought about the man and you said he's got to go this is unacceptable now it's been nearly a week now have you have you made any thoughts about what you think would be a good person to to put in there instead i mean we've all heard of the rumors that that possibly could be i mean we're, we're hearing that the likes of gareth southgate um, brain potter people like that you've now got thomas tuchel that's available um there are names out there there's no real standout that i would think You've just got to go and move quickly and go and get him. Um, but I just think, you know, I know you've always got to have a plan after you make a decision like that, but, but this current manager fills me with no confidence whatsoever. And, you know, you, you, what, we, what, what are Manchester United going to do? Wait for the perfect candidate? You might be waiting a year, two years, three years. In the meantime, going to keep being served up this? I think, I think you almost just got to make that decision... <laughs> And then, you know, I'm sure they're, they're searching as we, you know, as we you speak. You know, the thing is, Mike, is that I was, I was reading some of the stuff that Sir Jim uh, Radcliffe was saying about trying to build structure and trying to build a structure where the club plays to a certain... St certain like Ajax, mm. which is something that Ten Hag was used to. And then you just, you just b bring the coaches in. Now, if that's the way they're going to go, then you've, you probably feel like... He might feel like, well... Ten Hag can operate in that situation, so we'll have to see how that works out. But to, to build that kind of structure in a club like Man United from the, from the bottom all the way to the top, so as then you can only bring in the, the coach, is going to be a long process. So it's going to be interesting to see how they actually do that, but something's going to have to give in the summer. We need to find out what's going to happen. And it's, it's, it's quite interesting times for Man United now. Certainly is. OK, interesting summer ahead. Let's, though, get the immediate thoughts from today, the 1-0 defeat from Eric Ten Hag. Well, Eric, we know that a, a Manchester United manager is never going to stand in front of us after a defeat and be happy, but can the players at least look the supporters in the eye today, knowing that they've given everything, the fight, the heart that you asked for beforehand, that was all there? No, I think um, your line is right. Eh? We can face them, where on Monday definitely we couldn't face them, uh, but uh, you see the fans are behind us and they fought with us in, in Palace and today we gave them back but that should be the standard in any game. So what was the key to a, a much improved performance? Uh, it is attitude. Uh, it starts always with the right attitude and that is what you have to build during the week and on match day uh, you have to be spot on and today we did and then you see even when we miss seven start 11 plays, potential start 11 plays, we are competitive uh, with one of the best uh, teams in the league. So you say attitude, but also a bit of an adaptation from you tactically today. Dallo looked very narrow. I don't know if the plan was to sort of restrict Arsenal, stop them coming through the middle. Yeah, but it's also always uh, the plan, and it's about the execution. And when you don't have the right attitude, and when you don't find the moments to press, when you don't be on one page in togetherness, or when you get beat, when you don't make the recoveries, uh, then you make it very simple for every opponent. What did you make of the goal that decided the game? Should Casemiro, should he know to be out there? Or is that just a case of it's a midfielder playing in a, you know, out of position? I think that um, this, uh, I think it's a line and you describe it, uh, that situation uh, that is a midfielder playing in that position, making a mistake, making a small mistakes, but yeah, has hard consequences. How important is it that this is just, you know, this is the, the base, if you like, and you, and you move on from here with basically three cup finals left, not just one. No, um, but I think for a United player, every game is a final. And you have to perform and you have to win every game. And we should realise this. What is, you mentioned the supporters, I think, in your first answer, right behind the team again today, right behind you, it seems like, as well. What does that mean? Because... I mean, you're the manager of a massive club that hasn't had a great season and it feels like the pressure and scrutiny, scrutiny on you is big, but to have those supporters still behind you, what does that mean? That I think the fans understand this, where we are, where this club is. Uh, if we have so many injuries, and especially on key areas, uh, they don't 
get what they deserve, the fans. But they, they understand this. And that's why I think they are behind the team, because they say most of the times also a team what's fighting for each other, eh, but has the right spirit. And I think that's why eh, they are with us. We are united. Eh, we, are, we have a strong bound and hopefully uh, we can pay them back in the future. And do you think you've shown today that you're a manager that's still able to really influence this team tactically and in terms of their motivation? I have, a, uh, I have no doubt about this <laughs> because, as I say, maybe in Palace, but I think there's also human beings and I, in my experience that will always happen once in three months uh, that you are not in the right attitude, but uh, on Monday we had such a night, but mostly this team has always the right spirit and they always uh, execute the rules and the principles from the game how we want them to play and even if they have to adapt to different positions where, where we are now with all the injuries and so yeah I can only be happy and I think a yeah, big compliment for this team uh, that the ones who played and uh, they execute uh, with all what they could and they were competitive and yeah, they, they were fighting and then you see you can get a result. Obviously the league table, the gap between yourselves and Arsenal looks massive, but with a fully fit squad, how big do you think that gap is between yourselves and the very best teams? Oh, that is just uh, hypothetic. We don't have to answer this question in this moment because um, it isn't. We have the problems and that uh, the problems cost us, uh, I think, the results. But I don't know where we should be uh, when we had all the players on board. But definitely is. Uh, if there are players all on board, uh, then you will get more points. Definitely you will more consistency, especially in the back line. Uh, because yeah, now we concede a lot of chances, a lot of goals. And last year we had the most clean sheets in the Premier League. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All the best. Well, Manchester United, the most points they've ever finished off the top of the league is 35. They're 32 at the moment. He thinks the supporters have been paid back somewhat today. <laughs> no, I don't think that. It, I think with him, with Ten Hag, it's one of his problems doing these post-match interviews, but I'm not sure he, can, he, he knows precisely what to say. He, he, he's, he's trying to be honest and... Uh, He's someone who analyzes a lot, so he's, he's spending the next couple of days looking at the game, preparing for the next. He's ha he hasn't had that time, so he will probably see a lot of what we've seen today when he looks back at, the, at this game. But he's, I don't think he's excelled in his post-match interviews because he, he came out one week saying that, that his team was the most dynamic and entertaining team in the Premier League. They've just beaten Sheffield United 4-2 in a game where they were 1-0 down and 2-1 down as well, and a little bit fortunate to get to 4-2. And, and I don't know why he's doing that. It could be a deliberate thing to divert from other things, but, you know, I don't think he's, he's excelling in that. And, you know, sometimes it, it give, I just, I'm worried about, you know, what's going to happen going forward if, if he's, a, he's the one driving the bus. I am, I have to be honest. You are as well. Uh, uh, yeah, I... <laughs> I can't imagine any Manchester United fan sat there at home watching that is going to be, that's my man, that, that, well, you know, great motivation. I, yeah, I get that. It's, oh, wow. If, 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 if that type of interview, if that type of, we don't know what the plan is on the pitch. And after that, how long was that interview? About four minutes. I, I'm even more confused than I was beforehand. I mean, there was just, was there any sense in that? Mentions injuries a lot. Uh, OK. Whose fault is that? Whose fault's the injuries? I think that's it's not yours. It's not yours. Oh. It's like, it, he's the manager. It's his club's problem. Mm. You know, like why are you blaming problem. everyone? Why you know, everyone blame? gets injuries. It's the last thing you can say, Mick, for me. Talking about injuries, I think that if you're going to, what they should be doing, they should delve down into their injury department and, and uh, who's the, the medical department and find out why so many players are taking so long to come back. And when they do come back, they break down again. We've seen it recently again with, like, with Mason Mount. not saying that Mason Mount's pulling trees up at the moment, but... No, no, he played on Monday and he's injured again. He's, he's injured. And so those are the things, again, that is part of what they're going to have to look at. Because if you can get Man United's first team out, then you probably feel like they're going to cause teams more problems, mm. without a shadow of a doubt. The, the, looking after the injuries and getting people back is vitally important to what you're doing. Yeah. Quickly, go on.
No, I'm just saying having worked with someone like Sir Alex Ferguson, Alex Ferguson always, I mean, he had this saying, like, the season starts in March, you've got to be there, there about. Yeah. But also, he never, ever wanted us to train very much, 45 minutes maximum an hour. So not putting pressure on the players in training, mm. not putting pressure, because it's difficult, it's hard, hard to play all these games. So, so I just have a, a suspicion that there are other principles being brought in from other countries, other leagues, where, where this is how we've done it. And it sometimes doesn't work on, on the Premier League. Sometimes you you got to compromise on maybe some of your principles that you've got to train the day after, you know, day after a game, you've got to train. Cause it, but sometimes it's better for you to have five days off, mm. you know, and just two days training. And f so, so Alex would do that because mentally you got to be ready for the games. It's not about the numbers on you know, everything is measured up. It's not about that owner. It's also about what you see and what you feel. Mm. And sometimes I just feel like that's not really in there yeah. anymore. I remember that time he gave you a week off, you and Scalzi, do you remember? You went to Barbados, Scalzi went, went to, to Barbados. the Lake District. <laughs> I left, I left, I left playing really, really badly. I came back playing really, really well. Yeah. Because now you, you know, not Fresh. playing, but playing Mike, the, what Michael I was Michael in Sandy do. Lane, and then, then there you were. Yeah, brilliant. How the other half live? Hard remaining, well, remarkably upbeat, you'd say, right? Well, he has to be, and he's an experienced manager, it's certainly not, um, not easy getting interviewed after a game where it's another defeat and the stats for this team are so bad in terms of the records, defeats, where they are on the table. Um, you know, their struggles in Europe. Yeah, they've got a cup final coming up in a few weeks. So it's, it's, it's a tough interview and he's trying to stay positive and, um, you know, there are tough questions he's been asked about, you know, the players behind him and is he tactically up to it and, you know. Do, are, do you are, think he is? Tactically up to it. Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to think so, and I think there, there has been genuine problems at the club. The injuries, and he mentioned the back four, and I think he's he's pretty honest with that side of it. But the more games you're losing, and when you're eight in the table, yeah, you, you, I suppose you, you end up losing that belief. But it doesn't mean to say you'd sit here. I'd never sit in the studio and think uh, I think a manager should lose his job or anything like that. I, I hope he's given more time, and they get to the summer, they can regroup and restructure the club or whatever that might be. But there's. Um, Huge problems at the club, but I, I hope, I hope he's given that chance to to, to get things right. Because last year there was some positives, just, you know. Let's we um, have to be honest with that. And they have a cup final coming up, and if they manage to beat Man City, it's going to be very very difficult. But there's huge challenges he's facing, and 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 he's under huge pressure. What's your take on it, uh, Wayne? They are 32 points off the top now. They've lost 14 games, the most in, in any uh, Premier League season. Should Eric Ten Hag be under scrutiny? Should his job be in question? I think anyone who, who's Manchester United manager is, is under pressure because obviously it's a huge club and um, when you're losing games and, and in the way that the losing games at the minute is, is there's going to be big questions asked and I, I, I said this a few weeks ago, I think the players have to really look at themselves because when you've got your manager doing an interview and he's talking about attitude and players' attitude not being right to play for Manchester United. That is a massive insult. If I see my manager saying that, then there's no way I'd, I'd just let that ride and ride till the end of the season. And it looks like some players are just trying to get to the end of the season. And that's my personal opinion. And um, so I feel for him in that way. But ultimately, it's his job and um, to, to make sure the players are right. So is it your feeling that, that perhaps some of these Manchester United players are not playing for this manager anymore? Well, if they are, I don't think they're showing it very well. I think the the performances, there's some very good players in that squad and the performances are, are way below par.